All right, ask the question again. Say, what's the implication for white, for white people? All right, give me that in uh, Revelation. The Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. So, my brother, who brought our ancestors to this island? What, what race are they? White people. So you're finding out what's the implication for them, right? Let's find out. Read. Book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity. Did they lead us over here into captivity? Right, so God says, whosoever lead the Israelites into captivity, read on. Shall go into captivity. That's their punishment when Christ returns. Lighting up your cigarette and my brother. This is what the Bible is saying. Read that. And behold, what came and said unto him. Hold that, hold that. So the sister said, Why am I talking about her cigarette? Give me that in Isaiah 58. I'm gonna show you, my sister. I'm gonna show you. I'm not attacking you, I'm just showing you what God requires from us. Because we all want our people to be delivered when Christ comes. A black man like ourselves. So let's show you what, what the Bible says, is. Sister, let's show you what the Bible says. We are not attacking you. We are just pointing out what the Bible says we should do. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 1. Cry aloud. So that's why we are on the streets of Gaizi. We have a microphone and we are talking so that everybody can hear what we are saying. Read on. Spear not. And guess what, sister? Your feeling might be hurt. Because what you're doing, you're not supposed to be doing that. You're not supposed to be smoking according to the Bible. Because your body is the temple of the living God. So you should not be smoking and defiling your temple, right? So God said we should not spare your feelings if you feel bad about the things that we're showing you that you're doing wrong. Read on. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Read on. And show my people their transgression. What God said we should do? And show my people their transgression. You understand that, my brother? So that's why I call out to you as my brother and my sister. Because we love our people. We're not going to tell you lies like the pastor in the church. We're not seeking to get your money. We're going to tell you what God says. And God said we should not mind how you feel about it. God said we should point out your transgression. God says we should point out your sins. That's the, the duty of the pastor. Right? Read on. And the house of Jacob, their sins. And God said we should show you your sins. Give me so that in uh, Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. God says you should not defile your temple. When you smoke ganja, when you smoke cigarette, anything that you consume in your body that defiles your temple, God says you should not be doing that. When you drink till you get drunk, that's defiling your temple as well. Read, read what you got. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temples of God? So guess what, brothers and sisters? You are the temple of the living God. God said we should come out here and tell you these things. Read on. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwells in you? So brothers and sisters, the Spirit of God dwells in you. And therefore, because the Spirit of God dwells in you, what should you not do? If any man defile the temple of God. If any man do what? If any man defile the temple of God. So guess what? When you're smoking, you're defiling your temple. Because when you smoke the ganja and get on a high, it's not the Holy Spirit that is on you why you feel like that. It's some other demon spirit that comes upon you when you smoke the marijuana. When you smoke the tobacco, it takes you off into an evil spirit. That's not the spirit of God. You understand that? So God said if you defile your temple, read on. Him shall God destroy. God is going to destroy you. You understand that, my brother? So we want you to stop smoking the, the ganja because God says he's going to destroy you. Why? Because your, your body was created to host the spirit of God. And if the spirit of God cannot be hosted in your body, God don't have no use for you. So he's going to destroy you. But before he destroy you, he have us to come out here to warn you of the things that you're doing contrary. You understand? If my brother right here who is lighting up the cigarette, this, I'm talking to you as well. God said you should not destroy your temple, my brother. You're supposed to be kings and gods on the earth. But you have to repent from these things. Right? 
So, by you doing that, that is a sin because God said you shouldn't destroy your temple. Give me what is sin. Sin is when you go against God's law. God said you should not destroy your temple. You smoke your ganja, you smoke your tobacco, all of these things. You, you drink till you get drunk. All of these things defile your temple. And God is going to punish you for that. Right? Read. The book of 1 John, John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. So, brothers and sisters on the side over there, we're defining what sin is according to the Bible. God says if you're committing sin, that means you're breaking his laws. There are laws being broken when you commit sin. Read on. For sin is the transgression of the law. What is sin according to the Bible? Sin is the transgression of the law. Okay, give me that in Timothy. First Timothy 2, 1 verse 9. God says sin is when you, dis when you, when you break the laws of God. So if you're smoking marijuana and you're smoking cigarettes, you're defiling your temple. And because of that, God says he's going to destroy you for that, brother. Smoking is against the law. It's against God. You understand that? Smoking is against God because you're defiling your temple. If you eat pork, you're defiling your temple. You eat crab, shrimp, lobster, all of these things are unclean food. And God said you should not be eating these things because why? You're defiling your temple when you do these things. You are the Israelites and you were created not to be partaking in these things. Read what you got. The book of First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Women should cover up their bodies. That's what the Bible says. It should not be on display in the public because God is against that. And the churches refuse to tell you these things because what? They are seeking out your money. And they are leading you down the way of destruction. But what did God say again? Read that again. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So God says women and men should dress in modest apparel. God says women should dress modestly. That's, if you want to make the kingdom of heaven, these are the things you have to comply to. Now, give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. We are reading the Bible to you, brothers and sisters. We are showing you the way to eternal life. This is how you get eternal life, by doing what God says. Not following the trend and the fashion of the world. Read no, read what you have. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. No, the Bible says women should not put on men's garments. My sisters, what are you wearing that is similar to what I'm wearing? That's your pants, sister. God said you should not dress in pants. You cannot get to the kingdom of heaven wearing pants. There is nowhere you ever see a kingdom where the queen dress in pants. That pants is a man's garment. God says women should not dress in pants. But guess what? You don't have to do what God says because what? You feel like you're your own big woman. You're your own big man. That's why there is a judgment day. The judgment day is the day when God will judge you for the things that you have done in this life. God says don't dress like a man as a woman. If you live your life like that, when God comes, you're going to be judged for that. But before the judgment, God sent us out here to bring you back to the Bible. To teach you what he requires of you for you to get eternal life. So God says the women should not dress like men. Neither is it okay for men to dress like women. Read on. The woman shall not we wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so. So sisters, if you are dressing like a man. Brothers, if you are dressing like a woman. Hear what God says about you. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. You hear that my sister? By you wearing pants, you are abomination in the sight of God. So we are just showing you what the Bible says. The Bible says if you dress like a man as a woman, you are abomination in the sight of God. So the question I want to ask, if you want to get to the kingdom of heaven, can you get to heaven wearing your pants? Can the sisters get to heaven wearing their pants? Can the brothers get to heaven wearing dresses? Hell to the no. You cannot get to the kingdom of heaven doing what you want to do. Let me prove that. Give me that. No, read what you have. 
the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defile it. So anything that defile you, read on. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination. Neither what? Neither whatsoever worketh abomination. So my sisters, if you want eternal life, you have to stop dressing like a man. That is a sin according to the Bible. Brothers, if you want eternal life, you cannot secretly dressing like women. That is abomination before the Most High God, and you're not going to make the kingdom of heaven like that. You understand? No, give me that in Matthew 19 now. So how does Christ say we make the kingdom? How do you make the kingdom of heaven? Let's find out how the Bible say you're going to make it. Read what you have. The book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So we are talking about what should we do to get eternal life? Read on. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but that but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life. So the stipulation, if, only if you want eternal life, what should you do? Keep the commandments. What should you do? Keep the commandments. And one of the commandments says women shouldn't dress in men's clothing. Men shouldn't dress in women's clothing. So if you want eternal life, you have to repent from that. That's what repentance is. When you learn the laws of God, when you learn what God wants you to do, you change over and start doing what God said to do. That's how you're going to get eternal life. And that's what we are here to show our people. We are here to cry aloud and to show you your sins. Show you the laws that you are breaking according to the Bible. You understand that? No, read it again. Matthew 19 and... My brother, give me a minute. Do you, do you know how to get eternal life, brother? Do you go to church? Okay, so what, what would be the right? Give me a minute, man. Listen, we're not doing nothing to you, you know. We just want to interact. We just want to pass on some knowledge from the Bible. Because I know you, you love God, right? Yeah, I love God too. So when I find out how to please God, I, 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 I start doing it. So do you know how to please God, my brother? How do you please God? Because he's not down here where we can hug him up and we can knock off his fist and say, Hey, God, I love you. He's not here for us to do that. So how do you demonstrate pleasing him and loving him? How would you do that? Serve him. That is so right. But how do you do that though? How do you serve God? So where would I go to find the right thing to do? No man, remember, you know. Alright, say for instance, you go to the restaurant and you tell the man say you want a fried chicken. What do you have to do? You have to bring your fried chicken. Because if you bring something else, you're not going to accept it, right? So it's the same thing with God. You have to find out how to please God. So let me show you a verse how God said we should please him. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. This is what the Bible says, my brother. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? So there's a question being asked. We're teaching that we're the Israelites based on the prophecies of the Bible. The Israelites went into slavery for not keeping God's commandment. Are you aware of that? So that's what happened to us. We are the one who came over here in slavery. And it's as a result of not doing what the Bible says, right? So God says, what does he require from you? What do he want you? What does he want you to do? Read on. But to fear the Lord thy God. You hear that, my brother? God said he wants you to fear him. Just listen. He's going to tell you how to do it. All right? We're here to show you how to do it. Based on the Bible. Read on. To walk in all his ways. Where do you find the ways of God? In the Bible. If you want to know anything that God is saying, you have to go to the Bible. Right? Read on. And to love him. And God also wants us to love him. Read on. And to, and to serve the Lord thy God. So this is how we do it now. He, he tells you the list of things that he wants you to do. And now he's going to tell you how to do it. Read. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord. So how do you serve God, brother? Based on what we read. Exactly, my brother, you got the point. So in order to serve God, you have to do what God said. Because the word serve is, is the root word of what? Servants, right? And servants serve somebody. So if you are the servant of God, that means you should be doing what God says. Is that true? Right, so God said we serve him by doing what? All right, so guess what? Right now, we're, gonna, we're not going to deal on enough people because we have to start with ourselves first. So what about you? What about you, my brother? Are you going to serve God by doing what the Bible says? All right. So today we consider us what day? What day is today? 
So it, in the Bible, it would be called what number? Seven. Number seven. So on the seventh day, give me that in Exodus chapter 32, 30, 31, 16. As the Israelite, what should you be doing on the seventh day? Rest. So does that mean you sit at your home and you don't do nothing? All right, so let's find out. Because the Bible is our guide, you know. So it's going to instruct us what to do. But first, let's prove what the Bible says you should be doing as an Israelite on the Sabbath. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 31 and verse 16. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. Who did God say should keep the Sabbath? Did he say anything about the Adventists? So guess what? We are not Adventists. We are the Israelites. And God said we should keep his Sabbath. No, give me verse 14. So what happens if we decide that we're not going to keep the Sabbath? You think God is going to do anything about that? What do you think? All right, let's find out what God is going to do if we decide not to keep his Sabbath. Read. Deuteronomy, Exodus 31 and verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore. Here he's warning you again. He said you shall keep the Sabbath therefore. Read on. For it is holy unto you. He says holy unto you. Meaning it's set apart from all the other days of the week. Read on. Everyone that defileth it. Not just you, but all our brothers and sisters who go against the Sabbath day. Read on. Shall surely be put to death. What is the punishment for not keeping God's Sabbath? Shall surely be put to death. You hear that, my brother? So when Christ returns, who is a black man like you and I, if you are found not keeping his Sabbath, the Bible says you will be put to death. We're not talking about the regular death because we are going to die at some point. But this death is talking about where God is going to destroy your spirit. You understand that? So uh, where are you aware of that, my brother? So why is it important to keep God's Sabbath? All right, let me ask you this. What are some of the ways to keep God's Sabbath? Because if you're going to do something, we need to know how to do it, correct? So let me know if you were aware of this. I'm going to read a verse for you. Tell me if you are aware of this in the Bible. Read. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10 and verse 31. Read. And if the people of the land bring weir or any ritual on the Sabbath day to sell. So we're talking about God's Sabbath, right, my brother? So God said if anybody bring weir or ritual, weir is talking about clothing. And ritual is talking about food. So if they bring it to us on the Sabbath day, read on. To sell. That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. So one way of keeping the Sabbath is what? He just read it. Not buying and selling. Are you aware of that? So on the Sabbath day, we should not be buying and selling. All right? So if we want the kingdom of heaven, we have to do what God says. So if you don't mind me asking, brother, are you aware that you're an Israelite? You're, you know that you're an Israelite. So as an Israelite, what is your responsibility and duty to your God? Because the Israelites, you know, when you read the Bible, their God is different from all the other nations that was around. You understand? So what is your responsibility to your God? What should you be doing to please your God? We know the Sabbath day is one of them. Right? So, keep the Ten Commandments. Keep the Ten Commandments. Alright, so was it only Ten Commandments? No. Give me that in our Leviticus uh, 21. There were other laws. How about the way how we dress? Alright, so I'm going to read a law to you and let me know if you are aware of this law. Because we are here to show people what God likes and what he does not like, right? Read this, Father Brother. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So I should say that we should not make baldness on their head, meaning don't take a razor blade and clean off the hair from your head. Read on. Neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard. So do you do that? Yes, if you do that, that means you're in violation of this law. You understand? And guess what? You might not have known it. That's why we're here to show. We're not here to bash our people. No. We're here to point out the things that God likes. Right? So God says, as the men, we should not be shaving off our face. So if we shave off our face, what, what is that considered as my brother? Sin. Huh? Sin. Sin, exactly. Brother, you, you're on point. You're on point. So guess what? Now that you know that, give me that in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Now that you know that, what should you be doing? You should be applying these things. Because when you apply that shows that you love God. Read this. Matthew 7 21. Exactly. Exactly. I'm going to read it for those who are listening as well. Right? Read. The book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Read. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So you hear that, my brother? So now that you know these things, you apply it. So there's one more law I want to ask you about in particular. When, when, when the, the woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment, are you familiar with that history? When you look up the word hem, what does it mean? Okay, so we have a Bible dictionary. I know it means 
father. Right. And it talks about it talks about having fringes on their garment. That's what it's going into. So Christ kept what Christ was teaching was teaching us to keep God's law. So what I'm gonna do, brother, I'm gonna go into the Bible and show you that particular law. It's just gonna take a minute and then you understand. I appreciate your time, man. No, the fringes. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Three. Speak unto the children of Israel. So now you know you're an Israelite, just like all our brothers and sisters here. God says Moses should talk to them, read on, and bid them. And that them. The word bid me to command them, read on, that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So if you look at the brothers here, it's not just on these garments that you see us in. If you come and see us, and now we, we, I do construction. And if you come on the construction site and see me, you're going to see me keeping this law. Because I want to show God that I love him. So God said we should have fringes on our garment. Read on. Throughout their generation. I mean you're going to teach it to your children as well. So look here. The natives who were here before Columbus. They are Israelites as well. And they were keeping that law. You understand? That law was given to us. Watch the car behind you there. Right? Read. And that they should put upon the fringe of the border a ribbon of blue. So now look at the, the fringe, brother. You see there's a ribbon of blue there, right? So what we are demonstrating to you, we learn what, how to please God and we are here to show it to our people. You understand? Finish reading it out. I'm going to take your question. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that he may look upon it. You hear what the purpose, purpose of it, my brother? God said we're going to look upon the fringes. Read on. And remember. And do what? And remember. And we are going to remember to do what? All the commandments of the Lord and do them. It's going to remind us to keep God's commandment. All the commandments, mean the, the Sabbath day, the way how we dress, the keeping a beard on our face, all of these things is to, there to remind us. So you have a question. Alright, my question was what's the purpose of the fringe? Why but it it it, ex, it further clarifies. Is it going deep or no? Like how can somebody get it that I should have? How can somebody go and bring it back? Okay, okay, give you an example. Give me um Exodus chapter 20. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 14. So this is an example of the fringes will help you to remember God's law, right? Read. Thou shalt not commit adultery. God said you shouldn't commit adultery. What is adultery, my brother? Uh, Alright, you're sleeping with your neighbor's wife. But the simplest form is you're sleeping with somebody else that is not your wife. All right, so now you have the fringes on your garment, right? You go over to the man's house, or the man's wife come over to your house. And you know they are chat, 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 and you're going to the room. When you go so, bam, figure draw off your shirt. You say, the fringes are right there. I say, but wait, me can't go, me can't go sleep with the man's wife. See the fringe, I remind me, seven of you commit adultery. All right, so for instance, you get past that. You tear off the shirt and fling off the pants. You go so, bam, and you grab the woman's frock, figure lift you up, so. And when you grab the human frog, are the fringes that in your hand? You see what I say? He said, right there, so I remind you, say, yo, we can't do this. You see what I say? So that's one of the ways. Another way, let me give you an example. Give me Nehemiah chapter 10 and verse 31 again. I'm going to give you another example of how the fringes on your garment help you to remember God's commandment. Read that. Nehemiah 10, 31. The book of Nehemiah chapter 10 and verse 31. Read. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victual on the Sabbath day to sell, right. that we would not buy of them on the Sabbath. All right, say, so today is a Sabbath day, right? And you walk a go, mommy, I tell you, say, this one hot, why? And your tongue come like it, a dry, dry up in your head. And one man, a pastor, say, bag juice, bag juice. And in your mind, you say, yo, me need a bag juice, I'm thirsty. And you go so, bam, if you pull out your wallet. And you go so, you see the fringe, you say, but wait, I sabbat to the man. You can't touch that bag juice there, you know. You have to go try go home quick and go get something. You see what I say, brother? So that's, those are some examples of how the fringes help you to remember to keep God's commandment. You understand? Give me 2 John 6. Give me um, 1 John 14. So this is the very, this is the importance. Because God is not down here, or his son is not down here, where we can hug him up and say, I love you. But we can show it through our action and our obedience to him. So this is an example of what Christ said. John 14 and 15. If you love me. John chapter 14 and verse 15. Three. If he love me, keep my commandments. You hear that, my brother? So we show God and his son that we love him by keeping his commandments. So as the Israelites, that is our duty and our responsibility to keep God's commandment. You understand that, my brother? So in the Bible, what does Christ look like in the Bible? What does he look like in the Bible? Yeah. Just, just tell me, just tell me, I'll find the verse. You have woolly hair. Yes. 
All right, so you, you truly believe that? You believe that that's how he looks, right? Okay, all praises, bro. Come knock off my fist, man. Come knock off my fist, brother. Because a long time, you know, see a brother where where him go in the Bible is because some Christians are going to tell you it's, it's just a, a, a vision or whatever. You understand? So the bottom line, you are saying that he's a black man according to the Bible. Right, he's a black man. So guess what? Give me a second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. If you were not able to know what Christ looked like, how would you be able to understand this verse right here? Read this. The book of second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. So the Bible says that there will be another Jesus preach on the earth. Give me Matthew chapter 24. And is it verse 1 or verse 24? Okay. Right? So Paul says, if he that come preach another Jesus. Read. Let's show you what, what, what Matthew said now. Listen to this brother. Read. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 24. Read. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. So guess what? Paul says, if somebody come and preach another Jesus, Matthew say a false Christ. So how would you know the fake from the real if there is no description of the real? You see what I'm saying? So when the Christians say nobody know what Christ looks like, they're lying. It's just that they don't want to accept the fact that the Bible is telling you. You understand? Because in the churches, this is what? This is the doctrine that they have in the church. They say that this is, oh Jesus, you watch Passion of the Christ? This guy come in Passion of the Christ. And they show you beating him and he's limping with a cross and all kind of stuff. And black people is there. <laughs> Look what they do to Jesus. And the woman them are getting a spirit. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The blood of Jesus! You understand? And they say this is Jesus. But this is not Jesus, brother. This is an imposter. So they are actually worshipping the white man as Jesus. You understand? And that's what we read about in Matthew. A false Christ. And what we read in Corinthians, another Jesus. The bottom line is you're an Israelite, brother. And you have to repent as the Israelite. You see all of these churches out here? Do you believe that they are of God? None of them are of God. Let me show you. Let me show you the church that God is dealing with. Hold on. Give, I'm, just, I'm gonna let you go, but I want you to think about this as you go. Because guess what? There, there are many churches on the earth, right? And they all said they are serving who? They're serving God. Every single one of them said they're serving God. But why is it they all believe different things? And it's only one Bible. You know what the problem is? Everybody take out something to suit themselves. You understand? The children, yeah, man, read that. We said unto the children of Israel. My brother, who is Moses talking to? All 12 tribes, right? So read on. A prophet shall the Lord thy God raise up of unto you of your brethren like unto me so Moses tell them God is going to raise up a prophet like me just like how I deliver you from Egypt this prophet gonna deliver you from your captivity that's why Jesus the black Christ died on the cross to save you and I you understand but that was stripped from us in the time of slavery no this is the point jump down to the next verse verse 38 this is he that was in the church in the wilderness where was the church my brother who was in the wilderness with Moses who was in the wilderness with Moses? Exactly! So who is the church that God is dealing with? The Bible. Which is who? The children of Israel. So, so guess what? The, the Baptist, the Pentecostal, the, the, the Seventh-day Adventist, that's not the church God is dealing with. He's talking about the congregation of the Israelites. You have a voice? Yes, sir. Right. What for white people? All right. All right, ask the question again. So what's the implication for white for white people? All right, give me that in uh, Revelation. The Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. So, my brother, who brought our ancestors to this island? What, what race are they? White people. So you're finding out what's the implication for them, right? Let's find out. Read. The book of Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10. He that lead us into captivity. Did they lead us over here into captivity? Right, so God says, whosoever lead the Israelites into captivity, read on. Shall go into captivity. That's their punishment when Christ returns. Their judgment is that they're going to go back into captivity when Christ returns. You understand? Every single one of them. And not just them either. The, the, the Chinese man you see over here, the East Indian man, all other nations outside of us, they're German going to be in captivity. So if, in, if they are going to be in captivity, brother, what position are you going to be in as an Israelite? You're going to be ruling. 
You understand? And the prophecy, give me that in Isaiah chapter 14. Alright, oh, it's a shame. Our flyers done. Up. We had some flyers, but they're all done. You, you will see us again. We'll come back here again. Or you might see us in Old Trias or somewhere. But you have a phone? Alright, okay. Alright, alright. See, the brother give you a phone. So all the information is on that. Alright, respect. So give us a call. Any question you have, we're going to answer it from the Bible. You understand? We're not going to tell you our own words. All right, bless up yourself, my brother. I'll pray to the most high. Yes, so we are... Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.